Aloha YouTube, what is up? I'm Tidal Boy here back again with another video. This video is actually going to be a Q&A video or an Ask Me Anything, whatever you guys want to call it. But this is the monthly segment that I do with the channel members. If you guys are not a channel member, then feel free to join down below. If you're a channel member, you're able to put your questions down for each month if you guys want to be featured on a video. So that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. And there's actually a lot of really good questions today. So very happy about that. So we're just going to dive right into it, guys. Let's talk about some sneakers. Let's talk about my life a little bit and any other questions that you guys may have for me. So questions. Question number one and the biggest question I want to talk about today is actually from Sean Kelly. What are your long-term goals as a person slash businessman and how does the hype beast or sneaker market play into that? That's a great question. Basically, what are my long-term goals and like how is sneakers helping me reach those long-term goals? And I think this is a good question because I don't want to do the sneaker thing or the hype beast like reselling thing for a very long time. Sneaker selling and like hype beast selling is a good quick flip or quick money, but it's not good long term money. If you guys are trying to be your own businessman and like work from home and you know, create extra income for yourself, then sneakers are pretty good at the early going. However, it takes a long time to like actually accrue a lot of money or you need a whole, whole bunch of sneakers in order to make it big. And most of the time people aren't able to get that like large inventory. Like I would say 99.9% .9 of people can't get that inventory. I can't get that kind of inventory, man. It's very hard. So that's why I think it's good if you guys are just starting out, you know, and you don't have a huge bankroll, sneakers are a good way to go. You get a pair of Jordan ones for 160 bucks at retail, sell it the next day for like 300 bucks. You made a profit of 150, 140 bucks, 140 bucks. And then now you have $300 in your bank with that $140 profit plus that extra that you paid at retail for 160. And then from there, you just buy two shoes and you go from two shoes to four shoes, so on and so forth until you have a good enough bankroll to invest into something else. And for me, the next step was always, I wanna try to get into the stock market. So in that previous video, I did talk about how I'm like investing in Robinhood app now, which this is not sponsored by Robinhood app, but if you guys want free stock, I'll link in the description below. But what Robinhood app does is it makes it really easy to invest into individual stocks. And some of the pros about investing into stocks, or at least for me, is that you're trying to like use that as like long term gains. One of the things you need to consider is that sneakers take up a lot of space in your house. It takes up like literally floor space of your house. So that's why it gets difficult to hold a whole bunch of shoes and you guys can't sit on them for years because literally you guys are just wasting space in your house because you're holding a shoe there. On the flip side of those stocks, they're intangible things. It's not something you need to actually put in your house. It doesn't take up space. It's just like a bank, you know, you're putting money into this thing and it's in there like in the web or wherever it is and you guys can tap into it or sell it whenever you want. So. That's one thing that I like about stocks is it doesn't take up like physical space. You don't need to wait for it to ship to your house. You don't need to go to the post office to sell it. It's literally just buy and sell online, which makes it very easy. Sorry, I know this is getting, I'm like hearing myself talk and I know it's getting a little bit complicating, especially for some of you younger guys. And I know the younger guys can't really invest in stocks either, but this is just my long-term thinking in terms of goals and stuff. So that's my thinking guys. And then from there, I do want to try to get into like bigger things like real estate and stuff. So it's a cycle of just using money to like make big investments and stuff so I hope that's the way you guys think as well don't think that sneakers are like the end goal because while it could be it's very hard to like maintain relevancy in the sneaker world for I don't know 20 years so just think about that and think about the future how do you feel about Nike doing reserves in three locations and never any other location um, I'm assuming that Patty is referring to New York Chicago and LA as in those are literally the only places that sneakers seems to care about in the United States. And how do I feel about that? I mean, I don't like it obviously, but I kind of understand to an extent. Those are the biggest markets. Those are some of the most iconic sneaker markets of all time. And it makes sense for Nike to go after like the big cities rather than look at like, I don't know, like Green Bay or like Hawaii, you know, it doesn't really make sense for them. I do wish that there was like a kind of like cycle that they could do though, which would be sick, you know, like cycle around different states or focus on different like areas, you know, rather than just those three locations. But I don't think that's gonna happen and I don't think they care about like us complaining about it either. So it's kind of like this weird thing where we just really have no control over it and it's not gonna change, at least in my opinion. And this is a really good sneaker question. It's from Celtic, Celtic, Celtic Craver, <laughs> whatever. Uh, Kel I think it's Celtic Raver 3. Um, he asked, should people hold basketball shoes like LeBron's or Kyrie's since some of their shoes can sell for over retail? or should they only buy to keep? From a reseller's perspective, I never cop LeBron's or Kyrie's, man. Like, unless they're super, super limited, there's no way that I'm copying one of those. Those shoes don't really sell very good. And even over time, like some of the older LeBron models, they're still not going for a lot of money. Unless it's like a PE or a sample pair, most of the time, they're just not good for resale. And I wouldn't recommend like buying them if you're looking to like flip them for money, you know? It doesn't really make sense for 
those particular models. The only other shoe that I could think of that was like a good reseller in terms of like Nike basketball, other than the Jordan models, of course, would probably be the Kobe's. And before the Kobe tragedy happened, you guys know what happened. Before that, his shoes weren't like hot, hot resellers. They had some resale value, but they weren't like very, very crazy, like the Jordan craze. But I would think that was the closest for Nike basketball. They got like for reselling purposes. So yeah, if Kobe couldn't do it. I don't think LeBron or Kyrie at this point will be able to do that as well. So something would have to like majorly shift for them to be good resellers. And so the homie Lewis Productions asks, what was your childhood dream besides YouTube? And what is some advice on adult life and what I could do better for myself to support my child? So this is kind of like a stack question. Uh, but actually, Lewis, my childhood dream was never YouTube. I did not even think about that in my adult early adult life like that was never on the table at all for me so yeah I wouldn't say that was a dream of mine and I still don't really think it's a dream it's just a blessing at this point where people want to watch a YouTube channel that I'm like hosting and stuff so I think that's cool but I would say my childhood dream was actually like helping other people that's always been like my main goal and focus which is why I went into like the counseling realm and I was a counselor for a couple years so that was actually something that I did achieve that I really wanted to achieve for a long time but in regards to your other question I don't have a kid yet so I can't really like give you any advice on that because I'm not a father so I don't really know what to like answer for that but in terms of like advice on your adult life I would just say like really follow your passions and follow your dreams it sounds really cliche but at the same time like a lot of people people really like slack on their passions and what they really want to achieve in life. You only have so many days and so many hours on this planet and how are you best spending that time? Are you spending your time in an office cubicle where you hate your job and you're literally just surviving from nine o'clock till five o'clock, go home and you know rinse repeat for the whole week? Or are you actually doing something that you love and work doesn't feel like work because you're actually out there doing your passions and you're like exploring things that you want to explore? That's what you should be achieving and I know a lot of people talk about that all the time. It's just that people don't like listen to it. It, which is really unfortunate some people feel like they don't have an option but i feel like there's so much opportunity man especially if you guys are living like in the u.s and stuff opportunity is everywhere you just really got to seize it and i know it's said a lot but really you guys just like kind of look intrinsically into yourself and just say is this what i want to be doing with my life right now and is this something that like i would be happy doing 20 years from now 30 years from now 40 years whatever it is if you can't see yourself being happy for 40 years in the same job, then I think you need to reconsider like what your job is and what your passions are. That got heavy, man. <laughs> I really got into like that counselor mode and just speaking. So great question right there, Lewis. I actually like spurred a lot of like thought in myself as well. Danny Vasquez has an actually really funny question right here, man. He says, when you're not wearing sneakers, you must be wearing slides, right? What slides you rocking if so? One second, let me go to the front and actually grab those for you. The local guys over here are gonna laugh at me so bad right now. So uh, to answer Danny's questions, I don't actually wear slides. In Hawaii, we wear something different and they're called slippers or sandals as the mainland people call it. Um, but <laughs> it's funny because if you're a local guy, you know what this pair of slippers is. This is a pair of locals. Uh, if you guys wanna check it out over here, brand new, dead stock, whatever, you know, like great leather quality. It's just, um, it's really just like a plastic slipper that costs like $4 at your local CVS or Longs or wherever you are. And literally this is what I'm wearing most of the time, I would say, man. Like when I go out and stuff, I rarely put on shoes because if I'm just going to the post office or something, like I don't really wanna like grab socks and put on shoes and stuff. Plus it's hot in Hawaii, so a lot of people just go the slipper route and that's usually like good enough. And so I would say those are like my most worn things and it's funny because it's only worth like four bucks. I have all of these expensive shoes and whatnot, but at the end of the day, I'm mainly wearing slippers that cost literally $4. So yeah, honestly, if you guys are from Hawaii, you guys know exactly what I mean about slippers. I probably should up my slipper game and go for like a pair of reefs or something more expensive, but yeah, we're saving money and we're using the locals for now. <laughs> That's a funny one, man. I didn't think I would show you guys those on the camera. And so the last question is from Justin Sotomayor and Justin asks, what sneaker do you think will be sneaker of the year? I think I mentioned it a few times, but I honestly feel that the Yeezy Quantum Basketball is going to be the sneaker of the year this year. There was crazy hype around it around All-Star Weekend where like Kanye drove out like these literal like Humvee stuff out with a bunch of the pairs and they were like dropping it off on Chicago and stuff. So I thought that was kind of cool. It created hype around the shoe and people were literally taking off their sneakers 
and trading it in for a pair of Quantums, which I think adds to like the legend of the Quantum and the hype as well. I think it's a unique pair and I think it's a unique look and I think Kanye really put a lot of work and effort into the design and into the performance of it. So I'm hoping that it will end up being sneaker of the year. And because I'm literally thinking that it might be, I gotta let you guys know, I actually bought two pairs for resale. I couldn't wait, man. I couldn't wait. I don't know when this video is launching, but I couldn't wait until the actual drop because I was unsure if they would even drop online at this point. So I bought two pairs of resale. One's the basketball model, one's the lifestyle model. So I'll have a compare and contrast video for you guys with on feet pictures and stuff. So you guys will know what I think about it. And at that point, I can say definitively if I think it'll be sneaker of the year. It is early in the year though, so we don't know what other kind of like surprises Jordan or Nike or Adidas has down the line. That's just my early like front runner. Anyway guys, that is it for this Q&A. If you guys want to be members for March's Q&A, then don't forget to sign up down below. Hit that join button and you guys are able to become channel members and you guys may be featured on the next video. So feel free to check that out guys. As for the channel members of this month, thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for supporting me and supporting the channel. and. Thank you guys for your questions as always. Until next time though, stay humble, stay blessed, take care guys. I will see you on the next episode. Aloha. Shoot.